Welcome. Welcome, welcome to Western Association for College Admissions Counseling virtual college fair tonight. We have a killer group of institutions for you to hear from this evening, and I can't wait for them to get started. But first, I have a couple of housekeeping items. We know that you're going to have questions, and our panelists want to make sure that you get the answers to your questions. So anytime throughout this presentation this evening, you will be able to put those questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We do ask that you list your question and also list the college or institution that you're directing your question to so they know how to answer appropriately. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are off um, because this is a webinar, so the panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. Um, there are going to be more sessions just like this in April and May, so if you enjoy this um, setup where you get to hear from six colleges in 45 minutes, make sure you sign up for more session sessions in both April and May. This is being recorded tonight, so the playback of this will be available as long as as well as all the other sessions that are happening this evening um, in about a week at that same website where you registered, so strivescan.com forward slash WACAC. Again, if you have questions, make sure you put those in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, um, list out your question, and then also the college or institution that you're directing your question to so our panelists have um, the opportunity to answer your question. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our first college. I have the opportunity to introduce to you the University of California, Santa Barbara. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, again, my name is Sebastian Franco. I am one of the admissions counselors here at UC Santa Barbara. Um, so again, for a quick overview, we're just going to go over just what UCSB is all about. Um, so again, the first thing that I always point out to is that we actually have a ton of amount of resources that are available to you as a student. Um, again, they are all the way from academic support to non-academic support. So we really want to make sure that you feel welcome, that you feel like you're part of this community, that you want to be part of this community rather than feeling forced to be here. Um, of course, we are part of the UC system, which means that we are research focused. Um, and on top of that, we are number six public university in the US. Um, and of course, uh, one thing that I like to point out is that we are number three happiest uh, university in California. I think part of that is the location, as you can see on the right. Um, we have a pretty good access to the beach and the ocean. So if you do want to do any water activities, you will have those options there for you. But don't worry if you're not much about the ocean, you will also have other opportunities for you here. Um, part, being part of that research side of things, we also have six different Nobel laureates that came out of UCSB. Two of them currently teach on campus. So again, a lot of opportunities for you to do that research, to do that internship, hands-on experiences with your professors, with your classmates, by yourself. So again, you will have a lot of opportunities for that. But of course, you cannot do research without your specific academics or majors. So within UCSB, we do have three different specific colleges. So the first one is the College of Engineering. This one has five different majors. It's the smallest within the UC system. But what's really great about it is that if you wanted to, you can actually graduate with a bachelor's and a master's degree all within five years. Again, that's a process you will do on campus. So you can look into more of that or you can ask us questions throughout the evening as well. Um, otherwise, this college, again, is the only one that is limited. We do have a limit of how many students can get into this college. So we don't have additional requirements. We just recommend a calculus or pre-calc while in high school. That will help your chances. Second college is the College of Letters and Science. This one has the most amount of majors, hence the most amount of students. Now, this college is not competitive, not impacted, does not have a limit, no recommendations or requirements. So basically what I'm saying is, as long as you're admitted to UCSB, you will most likely be placed into one of those majors. The only two exceptions, music and dance, they do have an audition beforehand, but otherwise a lot more flexibility for you to switch around those majors, play around with those specific majors. If you're undeclared, not sure what you wanna study, that's perfectly fine as well. We also have that option within the College of Letters and Science. The third and last college is the College of Creative Studies. Now this college is gonna be all about creating something new, something that does not exist here whether that is finding the cure to cancer, all the way to just creating your own art piece, this will be the college for that. This college will actually place you in a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program with another faculty member from the day you start till the day you graduate, and they will support you with the whole process of finding research opportunities, all the way to publishing that work, to finding and helping you with your careers or postgraduate school programs as well. Now this college, um, it is selective in the sense that we don't have an additional requirement, but we do have a supplemental application that all of you, if you're applying to this college, will receive after you submit the UC application. So just keep that in mind that that will be coming your way. Nothing you have to worry about right now, but just something to keep in mind and back of your heads. 
Now within UCSB, again, on the left, you can see our location compared to the other eight UC campuses, which again, most of them are here tonight. But um, the good thing about it is that we're only 90 miles north of LA. So again, you do have that bigger city just in case you want it, or if you need to fly back home, you do have the bigger airport right there. But again, we're not too far from it. The good thing about our location is that we don't have as much competition. So if you do want additional research or internships and opportunities for you to do jobs, you will have that option there for you as well. Since again, we don't have as much of that competition. Now within residential campuses, of course, this is before COVID. Um, of course, this might look a little bit different. We're hoping it go back to normal soon enough, but we do have eight different residence halls. You are not required to live on campus, not even your first year. We do have 3D virtual tours of all of them. So if you do wanna see what they look like online, please do so. Um, UCSB housing, usually that's the first link that shows up when you search that on any search engine. Now, again, just to kind of finish off, the main thing I wanna point out is that again, we do have a lot of opportunities for you to get involved, like I said, academically and non-academically. We do have over 500 student organizations, all of them started by and for students. And if you don't find the one that you want, just get it started. All it takes is just you, three other friends, and that's it, no extra fees. That's why we have so many to keep on growing. But again, within them, we have all the way from academic ones to the non-academic ones, like the Harry Potter Alliance or my personal favorite, which we don't have at the moment, but we used to have a Costco club. I'm not making this up, we used to have a Costco club. Their whole mission and purpose was to go to Costco for free samples. So as you can tell, the ideas are endless. So if you don't see it, you can always get it started. We are also a division one institution. We have 19 different sports. The most popular is by far soccer, but what's even better, every single home game for every sport, for every student is free. So all you need to do is just get your student ID card, head inside, have fun. Now, again, the last part as well, and just kind of briefly mention it, it's gonna be the updates regarding our application process. So again, every UC campus, we all use the same application. It's not the common app, similar in the sense that we use one application for all nine of us. So again, just keep that in mind that we're looking at your A through G courses, which we do have them online in case, in case you're from out of state, uh, but we're looking for you to pass each of those courses with a C or higher. 3.0 weighted GPA bare minimum if you're in state, and a 3.4 if you're out of state. Now, the other thing as well to keep in mind is gonna be the updates regarding COVID um, and all the changes that has happened since then. But the main one I wanna point out is at the bottom, the SAT and the ACT. So the SAT and ACT, um, UCSB specifically, will not be using them towards our admissions process or scholarships either. Again, this is just for UCSB. So check with every UC campus if there will be tests optional or if they have some other policy. But for UCSB, we're not using them even if you submit those course um, on the UC application. All right, and again, if you do have any questions, you can always ask us throughout the chat, throughout the night, but otherwise here's the information and I think that is time. Thank you so much. And audience, don't forget to put those questions in the Q&A box at any time. You'll wanna make sure you list your question clearly and then also um, indicate the college in which you hope answers your question so our panelists can answer appropriately. Next up, you have the opportunity to hear from the University of California, Irvine. All right. Well, thank you so much and uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Brian Ju. I'm one of the admissions officers at uh, the University of California, Irvine. And I know I have six minutes, so I'm going to talk about the top six things about UC Irvine that you need to know about. So number one here is uh, just an overview. You see that we're a top 10 public school. Number two for campus environment. Uh, we're five miles from the beach. We're right in between LA and San Diego, as you can see there. Uh, over 150 majors and minors to choose from. Um, 30,000 students from our undergraduate class, one third of all Fortune 500 companies are located right in Irvine as well as Orange County, and you get to be, uh, be a member of the wonderful alumni and eater network. Here we go. So number one is location, as I talked about before, right in the heart of Southern California, there we are five miles from the beach, right in the middle between uh, LA and San Diego. We're um, centrally located in that area. Um, so you have access to all of those locations within about 90 minutes or so. We have a little park called Disneyland that's pretty close by. I hope they open up really, really soon because I'm missing it. Um, but Orange County itself, you have great beaches, you have coastal weather, um, you have um, a really um, nice area for, we have professional sports teams, we have convention centers, we have uh, a lot of outdoor places. If you're a foodie person, um, there's a lot of really diverse ethnic food uh, that you can get. We even have boba on campus for $2 if anyone even knows what that is. So um, a lot of uh, options to kind of get around and really enjoy the location when you can get out there. 
281 sunny days a year. Um, the other big thing about uh, Irvine and Orange County is that we are ranked consistently as one of the safest cities in America based on the FBI crime statistics. So this is the 14th year in a row that we are ranked actually number one for a population of over 100,000 people for this one of the safest cities in America. So just to know that if you're coming from a uh, different far away, it's relatively safe across campus and as well as in the community of Irvine. So number two is gonna be our interdisciplinary approach. Now that's a very big college word, meaning that we actually like to combine a lot of different subjects and majors together. So if you look at our campus here, it's kind of a very non-traditional looking campus. You'll notice that it's actually a big circle. It's a bunch of circles. Um, with 36,000 students on campus, how does that all kind of function together? Well, unlike other colleges, we're actually structured in terms of a school system so that all of our schools surround this circle so that no one unit or academic subject is on one part of campus. We're able to actually encourage the cross collaboration. The circle structure here really encourages us to combine different majors together. So if you're a dance major and want to be an engineer, you can do that. If you want to be a bio major and go get your MBA, you can do that as well. So there's a lot of options in terms of being able to, I think, design your own program or kind of explore and dabble together. When I was a student there, I was a criminology major, and that combined social sciences, psychology, sociology, and law and law enforcement all together. All of our majors here are situated in terms of schools. So unlike other universities, we don't have a major, we don't have like a college of letters of arts and sciences or a college of engineering. Everything is essentially one big college. So that means that all your graduation requirements, all of the classes that you take are all eligible for your overall degree. So if you come in and you take your first couple of years of general education and you switch majors, you can actually continue that. You can carry over all of those general education classes to the different majors that are situated here. So all of our undergraduate majors and minors are located under these 14 different schools and departments. As you can see here, we have a school dedicated to computer science, school of education, engineering, business. Um, we also have new ones such as our College of Health Sciences, which handles our nursing school, our pharmacy school, and ever more popular public health, which we're all going through a pandemic and now definitely public health is going to be the forefront of a lot of jobs and industry going forward. Number three is really working in Orange County here. You'll recognize a lot of these logos and names of places here. And these are all places and businesses that I actually know personally of students who've gone on to work with these areas. If you're into business, all the big four companies are right in Newport Beach there. Walt Disney Company, everyone kind of knows that for entertainment as well as uh, animation and media. They're right there in Orange County. Boeing for engineering. We have Broadcom for computer sciences. Edwards Life Sciences for um, biotechnology, as well as Google, Blizzard. We have a huge program in computer game science and um, interactive media, as well as a really big esports program I'll talk about in a second. So number four is definitely return on investment. Um, you'll see that 94% of our students um, after the first year end up staying on campus. So we have a very, very high retention rate. And we are obviously above the national average in terms of four and six year graduation rates, meaning that students love their experience on campus. We have support programs. We have um, an academic counseling system that is very specific to the schools that you just saw. So they're there to actually support you and make sure that you're on track to graduate and actually being in the program and major that you want to be in. The other thing about that is alumni success, as well as transition into a lifelong anteater. Typical graduates uh, rank top among public universities in terms of salaries. Um, and then you also get to join a network of over 200,000 UCI alumni and 1.8 million UC alumni, which many of our universities here are a part of. And um, it's an awesome network to know that you are part of the University of California. Number five is our anteater spirit and active life. Uh, we are part of NCAA Division I. We have intramurals. We have an esports program that's one of the top ranked in the nation. Our League of Legends team is uh, typically highly ranked across the country. We were the first tier one research universities to have an esports program on that, as well as 600 clubs and organizations. Um, and then finally, beyond campus, this is just a quick picture I'll talk about maybe a little later if we have time about um, one of our Guinness Book of World Record dodgeball events that we've broken. Uh, but with that, finally, just looking at diversity, um, we are also one of the most diverse places on campus, but also uh, a lot of centers on campus to help support you from cross-cultural to disability to international center to LGBTRC to our veterans. Uh, we welcome all students there on campus here. Um, so with that, I am out of time. And so thank you for it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, 
chat me in the Q and A, and I will hand it back to you, Courtney. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Next up, I have the opportunity and pleasure to introduce to you the University of California Merced. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. My name is Juan Carlos Lopez. I'm an admissions advisor for the University of California Merced. We are part of the family of the whole University of California system. We are the youngest campus of, of all. We're about 15 years old. We're actually located in, in, in an area called Northern California or Central Valley, California. Many ways or another, if you see Merced as being the youngest one. Uh, we like to think that our campus itself, if you look at it where we are, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to and tell you that we're surrounded by huge buildings. We are basically uh, surrounded by a lot of agriculture, but that's what makes our university unique in many ways or another in that the students who are in our majors in environmental science or environmental engineering get to utilize some of those resources. So many times when other people would say that University of California Merced is in the middle of nowhere, not really. The University of California Merced is in the middle of everything. I like to think that UC Merced is like that hole in that donut with everything around it very nice and beautiful where you have Yosemite, Fresno, Sacramento, uh, distance to San Francisco, uh, Monterey Bay, and Santa Cruz. We definitely have connections to those ideas and ideologies to individuals to actually go out and venture out to. Being the youngest campus, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have uh, we we have missed a lot of things and, and and support for our students. As a matter of fact, as the youngest campus, we have we have made a lot of strides in the past 15 years, and we can we're going to continue to do so. For those of you who have had a chance to to watch. Perseverance who landed on Mars just a couple of weeks ago, or several weeks ago, guess what? UC Merced had, had his hands on that partic particular camp uh, project in itself. So I could tell you many ways or another, UC Merced has landed on Mars, okay? So as you think about the University of California, think about also how we are, as again, being the youngest campus, we have less than 10,000 students on a campus, but that makes us unique in many ways or another because this allows our students to actually interact and collaborate with a lot of our professors and staff and members on our campus. Uh, if you think about where we're situated, as I mentioned to you, Central Valley, California, and there's a reason why we were put there is for, for that reason was basically to service the individuals who live in that area. But we came to find out that close to 40% of our students do come from Southern California as a distribution across the state of California, as you see there. And we have less than 1% of our students who are either out of state or international students. So as, 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 as a friendly campus and a very useful and resourceful to our students, we like to provide them with all the opportunities available. Our campus is broken down into three schools, the School of Engineering, the School of Natural Sciences, the School of Social Science, Humanity and Arts. So if you think of all these majors that we have, we also provide you with minors. But one of the things that when people ask, what are the most popular majors? We always tell individuals that the, the computer science and mechanical engineering are very popular, the biological sciences, uh, the management and business economics, along with the psychology. Those are the most popular programs. However, uh, if you look at every college, you're going to notice that in every college, we have undeclared science, undeclared humanities, and undeclared engineering, which I think is kind of cool. Why do we do that? Because we want to allow students to actually explore and, and be who they are as individuals. And one of the things that we like to mention to you is that we, we don't necessarily ding you if you want to apply uh, going undeclared to any particular major or in, in general. That's perfectly fine. And the reason for that is because we know that students, when they go off to college, uh, within the first two years, 80% of the time they change a major three times. So on our campus, we try to facilitate a lot of students to find their, their, their career path in many ways or another. And we do that because we wanna make sure that we, we let the student decide as to what they wanna do. The newest major to our campus, which we're actually excited about, we have a brand new civil engineering degree. And that's something that our, our campus is actually very, very, very happy to have so that students can actually get involved with that and have the experiences that come along with that. You do have the opportunities to, to, to meet your professors. You do have the opportunities to do research. As a matter of fact, a lot of our students who, who are first, first years, so in this case, freshmen, are involved with a lot of research on our campus. But one of the things that you're gonna have on our campus is a 21 to one ratio, meaning that for every 21 students, we have one professor. And another thing about that is that uh, you have where a class, basically students have acknowledged or have, have told us that they're very happy to be on our campus because the professors get to know who they are. And one of the, one of the awesome things about UC Merced being so small is that you're going to get that uh, one on one with the professors, thus allowing UC Merced as a campus. We rank number one and number two. Number one, 
incenting more students to get their masters within the UC system. Number two, incenting more students to get their PhDs. So that's something that to contend with as, as a campus. Another thing that we've done that's really exciting to, to our campus because what we're going through through uh, this, this pandemic and this, this health issue that we're having in this country, we've created a, a, a program called UC Merced Dents. These UC Merced Dents not only uh, help us and help the students acclimate to the environment and try to make sure that they don't fall behind and fall be between the cracks. So we provide this connection, like the, a web connection through the community with the support and the lifelong learning and the connections. In other words, undergrad students who have connections not only with professors, but with staff, faculty, and advisors, so that they could get all the help they can get in order to be successful on a campus. So those are the things that we really, really enjoy ourselves in, in making sure that our students do well on our campus. Now, thinking about the city of Merced, in the city of Merced is about 80,000 students, 80,000 residents that live in the city of Merced. And there's a lot of things to do within, within the region. Our campus has over 200 clubs and organizations, and we ask students that to think about how these clubs can actually help you grow in a sense. If you can't find a club that you don't like, you could actually get involved with as much as you can. We're part of the NIA conference. We have four sports, men's and women's basketball, cross country, soccer, volleyball. We also have an outdoors adventure. This is what our campus looks like as of today because we're on the 2020 project and we're gonna to continue to grow. Now we're starting to plan on our 2030 project. And that's one of the fascinating things about UC Merced as we go move along. Again, with the admissions process, as my colleague from Santa Barbara already mentioned, same concept, uh, SATs are optional and what have you, and we all have the same requirements for admissions. I want to thank you very much, and I hope you have a wonderful evening, and we're going to have asked some questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Carlos, to you and University of California, Merced. Wow, I know we've learned so much about these great institutions so far, and we still have three to go. So next up, I'd like to introduce to you the University of California, Santa Cruz. Good evening, sorry about that. I almost forgot to unmute myself. My name is Sandra Ponce and I'm here to share with you a little bit about our campus, UC Santa Cruz. Okay, there we go. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with our campus location, we are in Northern California. We are about an hour and a half south of San Francisco and just two miles off the coast, set in 2000 acres of redwood forest. Um, so it is a beautiful location. We have about 300 sunny days a year with a beautiful view of the Monterey Bay Peninsula. Um, for students who are looking for lots of opportunity to have a lot of outdoor activity while they are um, in college, our campus lends itself well to that, whether it's at the beach, on a hiking trail, or on a bike trail, there's always something for you to do to get you outside and be active. As you see on the screen, um, our campus is the closest you see to the Silicon Valley. Now that provides lots of opportunity to our students for not only internships, but for job placement after graduation. And that's not just for our engineering students. They are um, lots of opportunities in the Silicon Valley for students across all academic areas. Now, we are considered a medium to smaller size UC campus with 17,000 undergraduate students and 2,000 graduate students. So because we have such a small number of graduate students, 75% of our undergraduate students do get an opportunity to participate in undergraduate research while they're on our campus. As you've heard from all of my colleagues, undergraduate research is at the core of the UC system and our campus is no different. And we pride ourselves on being able to provide those opportunities to students sometimes as early as at the end of the first year, just depending on the academic area and your interest. Um, speaking of academic areas, we do have 70 majors, 39 minors within five different academic divisions. Now, if you are applying as a first year student, you can apply undeclared. You do not need to know your major. Some of the most popular majors amongst students are human biology, economics, sociology, psychology, and marine biology. Now, if you are interested in computer science, which is another one of our popular majors, or computer engineering, you do need to state that on your application because those are the only two majors um, that you will be screened for when you are applying as a first year student. Um, but we also have minors that you can later on add as you are a student and as my colleague from Merced 
mention, um, our campus does also allow a lot of opportunity for students to explore uh, within their first year. You do not need to declare your major until your second year. Some other majors I just want to highlight that may be a little different and you may not find on every other campus are, for example, our critical race and ethnic studies, um, our art design game and playable media, and our computer science game design major, just to name a few. Um, now you see Santa Cruz is a campus that is broken up within 10 residential colleges. Um, the residential college system is another core um, value of the UC Santa Cruz experience. So all students, whether you live on campus or not, do affiliate with a college. All 10 colleges have um, very similar um, structures. They all have a theme. They all um, house students if you choose to live on campus, and they also house our academic divisions. Um, so the intention behind this was that students has have access to faculty very easily, and there's not um, there's a very blurred line between our faculty and our students. Um, so regardless of your college, um, you can have any major in any of the colleges. We encourage students to pick the college or affiliate with the college that they feel suits them best and not necessarily the college that houses their major. Um, every student chooses their college differently, but we do encourage you to explore the college system um, if you are um, applying to UC Santa Cruz. Um, as far as campus life, we do have over 200 student organizations. We are a D3 campus. Um, so some of our D3 sports are women's basketball, as you see there, um, men's golf, and um, I think we also have our soccer team that does really well. Now, if you're looking to be active on campus, but you're not looking to compete at that level, we also have um, a wealth of intramural sports or activities that you can get involved in, like our ballroom dancing, as well as our cultural um, organizations that put on our different cultural celebrations throughout the year. Um, as you've heard also throughout this evening, support for our students is very important to us. And I do want to make sure you're aware of some of the different areas um, and ways that we support our students. So not only through our academic advising, but programs like our um, EOP program, our career center, if you're looking for a job or if you're looking to have someone review your resume or go through a mock interview with you, they're available to do that for you. And of course, our health center does provide counseling services. As you know, this past year has been really tough. And even through this remote environment, our counseling services has been there for our students and a great resource for our students. Um, now in 2019, some of our top 20 employers um, have been companies like Facebook, Cisco, Apple, and Google, and Gentech, just to name a few. Um, we were named one of the top 20 universities most likely to land you a job in Silicon Valley, um, if that is something you are interested in. Many of our students come from throughout the state of California, but after they move up to the campus, they do tend to stay in the Silicon Valley area after they graduate. Um, so it's definitely a great opportunity for students. And lastly, um, we encourage you to stay connected and explore our virtual events um, and take a screenshot of this picture and I will be available in the chat to answer any of your questions. Thank you. The banana slug just makes me smile. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't forget you can put those questions in the chat at any or in the Q&A at any time. Don't delay. Um, even if uh, the institution you're asking the question of hasn't presented yet. Next up, you'll get to hear from the University of California, San Diego. Apologies, can you all see my screen? We can now, but we see your notes. All right, sorry about that. That's okay. Oh. Hit that present button. Yeah, it's like I haven't done this before, right? <laughs> Apologies for that uh, Looking great. technical error there. I was too busy listening and enjoying my colleagues share uh, so much information about my, our partners, our sister institutions here in the University of California. My name, my name is Michael Trask. I'm an Associate Director uh, for Non-Resident Recruitment at the University of California in San Diego. Uh, and as you can see, San Diego is really what I will focus on quite a bit here because we do have a lot of similarities with the schools you've already heard from uh, in terms of being a research institution uh, and in terms of being uh, part of the public system here in California. Um, so uh, I, do, I do wanna cover some of the basics here uh, as a research institution and how we see that path for a lot of our students. So, 
Um, for us, research is something that happens, uh, can happen as early as your first quarter on campus. If you're someone that's really aggressive uh, and knows exactly who they want to speak to in terms of faculty or uh, what projects that might be available to them that they might have researched in advance. That's the type of student that often is attracted to our institution uh, and is very much engaged in research as early as their first year and is available to them uh, in some cases as well. Uh, what does that mean when you do research? That means you're getting that firsthand experience uh, 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 supporting typically a larger research project by a faculty member or maybe even a graduate student uh, on campus. Uh, but the reality is you can be part of a team that can, that can present at a national conference. Uh, presenting at conferences allows you uh, to, be, to be seen out there and to be networked. Uh, the next step typically is for you to publish an academic journal, something you, you, you could do as an undergraduate, and maybe you'll co-author co something, but often it's something that's done when you go off to graduate school. Uh, and the idea is that you can create new knowledge, new experiences, new tools for, for our society to, uh, to, to have and, and cherish uh, in a world that's ever changing as we know right now. So um, that's a little bit about um, how we see uh, ourselves as a top ranked research institution uh, and how that plays into uh, the path of, of a student in undergraduate level through graduate. Uh, here's a nice photo of a, of a recent alum uh, at one of our top uh, uh, top feeders in terms of career opportunities, and that's with Microsoft. Uh, and being a San Diego, we are uh, we're not Silicon Valley, but it's often is considered kind of a secondary hub uh, for for innovation and technology. With the Qualcomm Institute uh, also being founded and housed uh, right in around our campus, founded on our campus, uh, and now housed uh, in and around our campus as well. Uh, the 140 plus majors and minors uh, in these eight disciplines uh, are areas where you will certainly find uh, something that you can study. Uh, and what I want to focus more so is on some of our more popular majors uh, and giving people perspective uh, that these majors are capped, uh, which means that they are uh, highly selective and have limited seats. Uh, I do not say that to discourage anyone uh, from applying to these, to, to these majors, uh, but just to know that uh, there are opportunities uh, throughout our university uh, in a lot of different areas. Uh, but if you are looking at the most competitive uh, and the most selective, uh, those are the cap majors. So often, often encourage folks to look to look within that, but then to also look beyond it and to see what other areas of interest that you maybe you not, not never heard of before. Uh, for example, one of the leaders in psychological study, uh, one of the first research centers for neuroscience. Uh, and neuroscience was a, was an area that didn't exist several years ago, uh, and we were one of the first majors in the country to have that. So you never know by exploring at a large research, research institution like this what you will find uh, within that. So I always encourage folks to really, uh, really, um, really explore their options. Uh, and one last thing I'll mention there as well is that we have the Scripps Institute for Oceanography, uh, which is really how our school was founded uh, back in the 60s. It was the Scripps Institute, Institute for, uh, Institution for, for Oceanography uh, initially uh, before uh, Roger Ravel uh, of Ravel College. You can see there uh, one of our names, one of the namesakes from the first college on our campus. Uh, which is a great transition to the college system here. Uh, the college system is where we see our unique quality played out uh, within within the UC system. Um, um, there, uh, our my predecessor here has a college system as well, uh, but for us, it's very much uh, a residential uh, residential and uh, first two year uh, uh, academic experience. Uh, so uh, in the, in this day and age, um, housing is uh, is is a high high commodity, and historically we have guaranteed housing here. Um, uh, can't say that right now, but we but but, but if you want housing and you want to be on our campus, uh, we're going to try to accommodate you, and it would be within one of these residential colleges. These colleges are where you'll get your first year advising. Uh, it's also where you will have your uh, first 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 space to really explore uh, different clubs and organizations, uh, and it's also uh, where you're living and dining. Uh, none of this is exclusive to you here. Uh, you can you can dine uh, and study, and you will study throughout our campus. But we we feel like this allows uh, students coming to our large campus to feel like they're at a much smaller, uh, much smaller college environment. Uh, and the way these colleges work when you apply is that you rank them. Uh, they all have different themes, uh, and you can see some of the um, some of the taglines there for some of them. Uh, different themes that apply to the curriculum that's within that. Uh, and this is a curriculum that you would fulfill in your first two years uh, before declaring a major. Um, uh, and fully engaging in your major coursework. Uh, it does not matter what major you're in. Uh, you, can, you can study any major from any one of these colleges. So it's again, it's really a way to organize you in a way that's much more comforting uh, for that first, first two year transition. Um, and uh, if we have any transfer students here, uh, you would also be put in the college as a transfer student 
and that would be much more of a residential experience to be chosen to live on campus, uh, but also a social social experiments with uh, with advisors as well uh, for you. So the college is, is for everyone. The moving on to uh, more so living on campus because I said I wanted to focus on uh, San Diego. So San Diego is America's finest city. Uh, it's our tagline. If you saw that first slide with the sunset, you would see that firsthand. Uh, I'm getting my time to wrap things up, so I'll just focus on. Uh, the fact that our campus is located in La Jolla, uh, which is just north of downtown San Diego, and it's very much uh, a residential area, uh, but our campus itself is a city within itself uh, with uh, 30 plus uh, uh, full scale din dining, uh, dining restaurants, as well as the traditional dining halls as well. So I encourage folks uh, to uh, ask us questions uh, throughout the night here. I have a colleague here, Chris, who's available as well. So please send us questions. Thank you all for your time. Those six minutes sure do fly by, don't they? Um, our final presentation tonight will be from Santa Rosa Junior College. And you might be on mute. Yes, I was, sorry, I thought I hit that. Anyways, I'm Amy Merkel. I'm a counselor and the transfer center director from Santa Rosa Junior College. And SRJC is located about an hour north of San Francisco in Sonoma County. And we are part of the community college system. Um, there's 115 California community colleges. And uh, we have about 15,000 students that attend SRJC. So you may be thinking about why would I go to a community college? It really gives you the opportunity to explore your academic goals. You can build basic skills or look at job skills. You can complete a career certificate and go right into the workforce or earn an associate's degree. And many of our students transfer to a four-year university. A lot of students attend a community college to save money before moving on to the four-year university. So at SRJC, we believe we are definitely a smart choice within um, your decision-making process here. And our transfer center tagline is university starts here. Uh, SRJC started in uh, 1912 and uh, we began as a place for students to start before they moved on to UC Berkeley or Stanford. And so that's really, in our uh, system and runs deep in our in our blood with our colors even of red and blue. So one thing that you did not hear from the UCs is the UC TAG program, which is the transfer admission guarantee for California community college students. So students can write a TAG agreement with one of six universities within the UC system and they're guaranteed admission into that campus if they've met the criteria. So that is definitely something that draws students um, into the community college if they are uh, interested in, in the UC system. The other part of our college is that we are a career education school. So uh, we train students to go right into their jobs. We have 140 certificate and associate degree programs in vocational education that assist students in going right to work. Just as with the universities, we also have a lot of ways for students to get involved on campus. Uh, we have learning communities, we have student clubs and organizations, we have the highest number of clubs within the California Community College system. We also have athletics that prepare students to go on to D1 and D2 and D3 schools. We have student government, our um, students are involved on campus committees um, in making decisions for the college. We have a robust theater and dance productions. Um, and then we have our student newspaper. We have an art gallery on campus and museum, a film alliance and sustainability runs very deep at our college and is something that we really believe in. Um, and so there's all kinds of opportunities for students to be involved um, and participate in various activities that go on at the college. Along with activities, we also have a lot of student services to support you through, as you go out throughout your education. So counseling services, uh, disability resources department to assist students with either a learning or physical disability. We have a dream center for our dreamers, the EOPS program, which offers uh, counseling and support services, foster youth, MESA is for students who are wanting to go into math, engineering, or science. 
Um, this is a picture of some of our success um, coaches. So we have peer mentors for students. Um, we have a teaching fellows program. So for uh, students who are interested in going into the field of education, we obviously have the transfer center and veteran affairs, and there's many more. So this is just, um, you know, a splattering of some of our services to assist you as you move forward in your education. So if uh, you are not a senior, we do have dual enrollment um, where tuition is waived for high school students. So that's something to take into consideration. Um, and then we have a robust scholarship program. We have the Doyle Scholarship, um, as well as um, what's called the Foundation Scholarships. And so many of our students attend SRJC for free. Uh, and so that, again, you're be being able to do your lower division coursework at a very, very reduced price. So it's just something to um, take into consideration and to review our financial aid and scholarship page. Our Welcome and Connect Center um, is for our first uh, year students. We really want students to feel connected on campus and to know that um, we are there to, to assist them. So again, we have our success coaches and then we have our first year peer coaches who work with our students in their first year you know, obviously this has been a struggle um, for many students in the, in the remote instruction. And so those first year peer coaches have paid, played an important role in helping students through um, navigating the online learning environment and things like that. We um, also do uh, various workshops for students. We have an app for students to help um, with them for facilitating and also connecting with one another. So that's another resource for students as well. All right, so if you have any questions, please put those in the chat and uh, we will be able to monitor that and answer any of those questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am now gonna ask my um, all the panelists to turn back on their cameras and I would love for them to quickly go round robin. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? So we're gonna start with University of California, uh, Santa Barbara. Sorry about that. My camera or the screen actually moved around. Um, so I would say with UCSB, we don't have a specific like official tradition, but I would say a couple of them would be one, trying out surfing, even if you've never done it. Um, obviously we're right by the beach, so students love taking advantage of that. If not attending a soccer game, that is huge for us. It's just a lot of fun to be part of those events. Hiking, what we call inspiration points. Um, so a lot of outdoorsy things as well. And if you like the indoors one, for me personally, it's actually going to a lecture hall that we turn usually every Tuesday night. Um, again, this is pre-COVID, hopefully after as well. We turn the lecture hall into a movie theater. So we actually have movie nights um, as well every Tuesday. All right, uh, I guess for UC Irvine, uh, yes, pre-COVID, um, one of our great traditions during Welcome Week was to actually break a Guinness Book of World Record. So our student body would actually organize uh, during that Welcome Week um, a couple of games to actually uh, break a world record. So the first year we did dodgeball, and that's what you saw in the picture earlier. Um, and then for some reason, the University of Alberta decided to break our record. So the following year, we had to actually reclaim our title and do another dodgeball game. Then we went on to do things like the world's largest squirt gun fight, the world's largest pillow fight, the world's largest capture the flag game. We tried a world's largest quad dodgeball game, which I had no idea how it worked. It just looked like chaos. Um, so those were the kind of the fun things that um, students would look forward to during that first week of school. Healthy competition is good, right? <laughs> Oh, and I guess for uh, UC Merced, if you see those arches right behind me, this is called the new beginning. So when we have students who, who are first year freshmen, they walk one, one way under those arches. And once they graduate, they walk the opposite, the new beginning of their career in college and the new beginning of their career after college. So that's one of the traditions that we do have at UC Merced. Um, UC Santa Cruz has a couple. Um, our multicultural festival is a really popular one among students, but then um, I think the event during Welcome Week, the Cornucopia, where all the organizations set up on our big soccer field and the dining facility set up out there, and all students have to go get their food out there so they can explore all the different organizations, and it really gives students a chance to see all their options, and it's really a fun night um, for students to come out, and of course, who doesn't love Sammy, the slug? Um, you know, he's always a, a fan favorite. <laughs> Uh, in San Diego, we have 
um, um, several uh, art exhibits right on campus. Uh, one of them is a snake path that you can see aerially from, uh, uh, from space uh, on, on a nice clear day. And the way it works is the files on it they, that they replace regularly because they get very slick and smooth. They're, it's a walkway down from, the, from, our, from our library. And um, so if you actually monitor that from space, it looks like the, the, the snake is shedding its skin. So I think that's always a cool thing when they replace the tile. At SRJC, we have an event called Day Under the Oaks that happens every spring. It's an open house of our campus. Um, our campus is full of oak trees. It's a beautiful place to be. And um, it's just a fun event for students to, um, uh, to, it's like an open house and students can, you know, showcase what they've done. We do a fashion show. We do, the physics group does something. The chemistry students do something. So it's just a really fun event for our community. Before we close tonight, I would just like uh, everyone watching to take a, a, sh a good look at all the, these awesome professionals on your screen right now. Um, every student has a person like one of them at all of the colleges and universities that you're really looking at. And I hope that you will um, realize that they are real people and they love working with students and want to answer all of your questions. So never hesitate to reach out and get your questions answered, whether it be phone, email, um, website, whatever works. Uh, just remember they're just people and they are there to answer questions for you. So thanks so much for joining us tonight. Um, as you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey. We hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. Sign up for more sessions that are happening in both April and May um, this spring. If you enjoyed this format, it's an awesome way to learn about several colleges at once and maybe introduce yourself to a college that you've maybe never heard of before. This recording will be available as well as all the recordings that happened this evening um, in about a week at that same website where you registered. So strivesdan.com slash WACAC. Have a great one, everyone, and best wishes with that college search.